We've all heard and we've probably experienced that your mind can actually be the deciding factor in your trading success or your failure. Some will go as far as saying that the edge that you have is yourself, regardless of your trading system, but there are quite a few instances where the same method, the same instructions were given to a group of people, but the results were varied. So that should actually give you pause to think that if you have a positive expectancy trading method and you're not finding success, that issue that you're having could just be you. Before we get started here, as always, I'm always going to ask you to do this. Hit like, hit subscribe. Any questions or comments, I need you to pop them below and I'll get back to you on those. Uh, thanks for doing that. Now, how you look at losing trades or how you look at winning trades and even missing your trades, that can sometimes make the difference between long-term success or your failure. So if you have a trading strategy and it's shown to have a positive expectancy, well, now you've got to start looking into other aspects of trading success. How you think and how you act, that's going to play a part in your success. And there are simple things that you can do to help combat the many psychological issues that do arise when trading. One extremely important one is to have faith in your trading system that in the end, after a steady stream of trades, the positive expectancy will deliver an equity curve that slopes upwards. Let's put this into perspective using an analogy about driving. So you know where you want to go and the GPS gives you precise directions to get there. That's the same route you've taken many times in the past and even though you've arrived later due to traffic at times, you eventually meet your destination. But what if during a busy weekend, you decide that you're going to venture off the proven track because there's so much congestion ahead of you. You decide to wing it. But not only that, you thought you were so sure about your original directions, you just decided to leave your GPS at home because you've traveled it so many times before. Well, that's what a lot of traders do. They don't get the results they want and become impatient. They start veering off course. Now it's into uncharted waters. It rarely turns out well. They drain their capital. They leave trading behind. They lose faith in the trading system. They start doing things that are out scope of the trade plan they tested. And some rectify this issue quite quickly and they can salvage what's left of their capital and they get to live to trade another day. Others, they have to quit. Now having a trading plan, a written plan of what you're gonna do, that's a given. And I think you know you should have one. But the fact is a lot of people don't. They're just simply not being prepared to treat trading as a professional career. Stats say that most traders fail. I think I believe that, and it's obvious why they do. But I want to step outside the trade plan suggestions, and I want to dig into two things that you can look at right now to make it easier to loosen the grip that psychology does have on our trading. And the first one, full participation in losing trades. And how do we get that? With limit orders. And you may have read that you have to have a definitive entry price. Let price come to you. And for a lot of people, they took this to mean they should use limit orders when looking to take a position in the market. Well, this ignores that oftentimes getting the best price is not the most important part of your trading method. In fact, a popular saying goes that you make money in the exits. Well, you also save money with the exits because if you don't get out of a losing trade soon enough, you're just going to watch your account tick away to nothing. But the problem is that if you think an exact entry price is of the utmost importance, and you're going to make sure that you buy into an uptrend cheaply. Flip that for shorts. You may be adding a level of angst that's going to cause issues in your trading. So I'm going to assume that you already have a setup that you're looking at to actually have an entry price as well. So in the following example, I'm going to look at support and resistance. A trader who does that, who places limit orders for the entry at the turns. So here, price continues to put in lower lows and lower highs. That's a downtrend. You mark off a resistance zone, place a limit order to short. Price rallies, breaks right through resistance, triggering the short trade. And depending on how they place their protective stop loss, they could immediately be taken out of that or are seriously underwater. So when you use a limit order, you will be fully involved in a losing trade when price triggers in and just keeps going in that direction. And the hands-off approach of limit orders, set and forget, that may appeal to a trader that risks may be unacceptable to many people. So here, the same trader spots a breakout pullback trading opportunity. They set a limit order to buy. Price misses the entry by a small margin. Here it was seven cents. So not only did they take a loss on a short trade, now they just missed a 22% run up in price. So just imagine if that's you, what's going on in your head right now? So after a series of negative outcomes, the same trader decides that trying to catch a turn, eh, probably not a good strategy. So using an entry order that uses momentum in your direction, at least in the short term, ensures that the odds are in your favor. So here, it's an uptrend. Price pulls back during this uptrend, and this trader has three areas to enter. We have a failure test. 
That's when price probes below support. It's rejected. It gives an entry above the high of that candlestick. A trader can also use the breakout entry above a trend line or above the last swing high pivot. Keep in mind, this is not a breakout setup. It's a pullback and using a breakout trade entry technique. There's a difference. And there's no guarantees that price is not going to collapse. But the traders put themselves in a good position because price was showing them that there was an actual reversal. Price is going in their direction. So you're not going to miss the trade. And hopefully you're not going to have many instantaneous triggers and stop outs. But the main drawback for a lot of people is price is moving away from a setup area. You could result in a large stop loss distance depending on where you place your stop. And that's going to end up in a smaller position size. But you know what? That's a trade-off. Now, for my own money, I think that's not a bad one. Next one is taking the dollar out of wins and losses. So this tweak kind of comes from the idea of hiding your P&L, although that's not the tweak, and hiding it until after the session is complete. Why is that pretty good advice? Well, when you see the ticking up and down of a dollar figure, that can just wreck your mind. So I want you to think about seeing your position. It's up 500 bucks, and then 10 minutes later, it's down 300 bucks. That constant wave of profit and loss, that could just cause you to exit out of a trade because you're having a difficult time dealing with seeing that. What's worse, when you attach something significant to a losing trade. So just imagine you took a loss of 1,500 bucks and saying to yourself that you just lost the equivalent of your mortgage payment. That's tough. So the tweak, it's actually from Van Tharp, who encourages taking the dollars out of your wins and losses and looking at them in terms of the R, the risk in a trade. So here, if you took this trade, you see a small profit begin to evaporate. Since price is not acting as you expected it should on a breakout, you adjusted your stop loss. If taking a full loss would be minus one R, which is one times your risk, and now you're just taking a negative 0.5 R loss. From a psychology standpoint, saying you took a $300 loss has a greater impact than logging a 0.5 R loss. It's half of your full risk. Even though it's the exact same thing. Is that just semantics? Well, maybe it is. But there's a reason why Van Tharp takes this approach and he does it with winning trades as well. In this example, we have an ascending triangle. We have basing under resistance. A trader enters inside the base. It's a viable approach. The stop is placed under the base. Price heads to the profit target for $3 per share win. However, the trader looks at it as a 11R winner, 11 times the risk. Is it a small thing? Yeah, you know, maybe it is. But I challenge you to approach your wins and losses in this manner and see what it does for you. Now, you certainly want a trading method with an edge, okay? But just to leave your edge concerned there, that's pretty misguided. Because trading is not just about the method you trade, but it's also about how you process information, including your wins, your losses, and of course, opportunities that you miss. But as traders, we want to make things as smooth as possible, especially when we know that how we think about trading can actually influence our decision-making process. Allowing price to move in your direction allows you rest because you know there were some gains in your position, right? Price is moving your direction. It also can allow you to adjust your stop loss if price is not acting as expected. Not using a dollar figure when you describe your wins and losses is without question a huge step and not being swayed by comparing that dollar figure to other financial responsibilities because that's tough. Now, details matter, okay? And these are small trading tweaks. I get that. But they can have a positive effect on your performance. And I challenge you today, right now, put these into use for the next month, the next 30 trades, the next 50 trades, the next 10. Try it. See if you don't look at things a little differently. Anyways, thanks for uh, listening to all of this. Hope this helped you out. Subscribe would be awesome. Like this video. We'll talk to you soon.